Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Biological Concept. In today's video, we will going to discuss on malaria, a vector borne disease. So stay tuned. Malaria is a life threatening vector borne disease. A vector is an organism that can transmit infectious pathogens between humans or from animals to human. Examples of vectors include mosquitoes, sand flies, ticks, fleas, etc. And the vector borne disease are those that are caused by and transmitted by these vectors. The malaria is spread to humans by the female anopheles mosquito. So the vector is here is mosquitoes. This disease is mostly found in the tropical countries. It is caused by a parasite named Plasmodium. This Plasmodium is a protozoa. So the malaria is a protozoan disease. The malaria can be prevented by avoiding mosquito bites and with the medicines. As this disease is transmitted to humans by mosquito bites, so if we avoid the mosquito bite, we can prevent from getting this disease. Now let's discuss about the host, agent and environment of the disease malaria. This is the disease triangle model or epidemiological triad model. This disease triangle model is a conceptual model that shows the interaction between the host, agent and the environment. A host is an organism, usually a human or an animal, that harbors the disease. Here the hosts are human and mosquito. Next is the agent. An agent is the cause of the disease that may be either bacteria or it may be virus or it may be protozoa or fungi or any physical and chemical agent. In that case, the agent is plasmodium and this plasmodium is a protozoa. So, here the agent is a protozoa. Next one is the environment. The environment are the surroundings and conditions external to the human or animal that cause or allow the disease to spread and transmit. The warm temperature, humid condition and high rainfall is ideal environment for the malarial disease to occur. Now let's discuss about the host of the malaria. The life cycle of a malaria parasite involves two different hosts. The first one is the human and the second one is the mosquito. Some stages of the life cycles occur in the human host whereas some stages of the life cycles of the malaria parasite occur in the mosquito. Here the human are known as the intermediate host whereas the mosquitoes are known as the definitive host. The human are known as intermediate host because the asexual reproduction of the malaria parasite occur in the human host. Whereas the mosquitoes are known as the definitive host because the sexual reproduction occur in the mosquito's body. That's why the mosquitoes are known as the definitive host for the malaria parasite. Next is the agent. As we have already discussed that, the agent for the malaria parasite is, malaria disease is the plasmodium. Plus modium which is a protozoa it is a protozoa okay there are five malarial parasites that cause disease to human and these are plasmodium vivax plasmodium falciparum plasmodium malaria plasmodium ovale plasmodium nolesi 
Among this, Plasbutium 5x and Plasbutium falcipedum pose the greatest threat to the human. And Plasbutium falcipedum is the deadliest malarial parasite. And this Plasbutium falcipedum is most prevalent in the African subcontinent. It is most prevalent in the African subcontinent. Okay. Now let's discuss about the environment of the malaria disease. The changes in the temperature, humidity, rainfall and other climatic conditions have an important factors that transmit the malaria. Anopheles mosquito thrive in regions with warm temperature, humid conditions and high rainfall. Thus, tropical and subtropical areas are ideal for this disease. The warm temperature are also required for the malaria parasite to complete their growth cycle within the mosquitoes. The mosquito lay eggs in fresh and stagnant water. Now let's discuss about the vector. Here the vector is the female Anopheles mosquito that transmit this disease. The life cycle of a Anopheles mosquito involves four stages. There's an egg followed by larva, followed by pupa, followed by adult. A they lay eggs in clean and stagnant water. The formation of the adult mosquito from eggs to take 7 to 10 days. They lay eggs 2 to 3 days interval. Okay. Now let's discuss about the mode of transmission. Here the diagrammatic representation of the mode of transmission of the malaria disease is given. When a female Anopheles mosquito takes a blood meal from a malaria infected person, they ingest the malaria parasite and become infected. Now when this infected mosquito then take the blood meal from a healthy human, they injects their malaria parasites into this healthy human and the healthy human become infected with this malaria parasite and within some time the symptoms of the malaria appear in this human. Note that when the infected um, when the mosquito takes blood wind from the infected persons they ingest the gametocyte stage gametocyte stage of the malaria parasites okay so once they ingest this gametocytes the mosquito changes this gametocytes to sporozoid the sporozoid is the infective stage of the malaria parasites now inside the mosquito's body this gametocytes is converted to sporozoid through sexual reproduction. And when again this infected mosquito bites a healthy human, they inject this sporozoid, which is the infective stage. They infect this, ingest, in, injects this sporozoid in the healthy person. And healthy persons harbor the infective stage of the malaria parasites and become infected. And after some times, the healthy person become ill and get the disease. And when again this, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, a mosquito bites this infected person, they again ingest the malaria parasites and they again transfer this malaria parasites to another healthy person. Thus the cycle is goes on. Okay. The details of the life cycle of the malaria parasite discussed in my previous video. The link is shared in the description box. You can check. So, malaria is spread to humans by the female Anopheles mosquitoes. Blood transfusion and contaminated needles may also transmit malaria. But this rate is very low. This disease is mainly transmitted by the mosquitoes. And the mosquito is the female Anopheles mosquito. Note that malaria is not spread by contact with the infected persons. To control the disease, we have to control the vector. And the vector here is the mosquito. Now, 
why only female mosquito take blood meal from human not a male mosquito okay because the female mosquito needs blood not for their food but to produce the eggs the blood provide enough proteins for the generation of the egg that is for the oogenesis and the male and female mosquito both take the flower nectar as their food so only the female mosquito take the blood meal from human for the generation of their egg that is for the oo generation oo genesis okay now let's discuss about the epidemiology of the malaria according to world uh, world health organization that is the who 2023 in uh, in 2021 nearly half the world's population was at risk of malaria okay so half of the world population was at risk of malaria in 2021 according to world malaria report there are 247 million cases of malaria in 2021 compared to 245 million cases in 2020 The estimated number of malaria deaths stood at six lakhs ninety thousand in two thousand twenty one, compared to six lakhs twenty five thousand in two thousand twenty. It is also reported in World Malaria Report in two thousand twenty two. This disease mostly found in the tropical countries. The infants. children under 5 years pregnant women travelers and people with hiv or aids are at higher risk of severe infection now next is the symptoms what are the symptoms of malaria disease the symptoms usually start within 10 to 15 days after getting by an infected mosquito the mild symptoms are fever chills headache whereas sometimes the malaria can cause severe illness and even the death also occur due to severe malaria the severe symptoms include extreme tiredness and fatigue impaired consciousness multiple convulsion difficulty in breathing dark or bloody urine jaundice that is yellowing of the eyes and skin abnormal bleeding the symptoms may be mild for some people especially for those who have had malaria infection before people with severe symptom that is the people with severe illness should get emergency care getting treatment early for the mild malaria can stop the infection from getting severe malaria infection during pregnancy can also cause premature delivery or delivery of the baby with a low birth weight now high risk population the infants children under 5 years pregnant women travelers people with hiv or aids that is the weakened immune system they are the high risk of severe infection now next discuss about the diagnosis how malaria can be diagnosed by rapid diagnostic test that is rdts or by microscopic examination of the blood smear and this microscopic examination of the blood smear is the gold standard for malaria diagnosis this is the gold standard for malaria diagnosis in rapid diagnosis it detects antigens derived from the malaria parasites for microscopic examination of the blood smear two types of blood smear are prepared one is thick smear other one is thin smear the thick smear detect the presence of the parasite in the blood whereas the thin smear determine the malaria species parasitemia or the percentage of the mal- patient's red blood cells that are infected with the malaria parasites 
okay now prior to the examination the specimen is stained to give the parasite in distinctive appearance when we see the um, malaria parasite through microscope the specimen should be stained with a you know, stain to uh, create a distinctive appearance and mostly the stain used are gm sustained Although the microscopic examination is the uh, gold standard for lab confirmation of the malaria, it depends on the quality of the reagent and also of the microscope and on the experience of the laboratory. Now the prevention. Malaria can be prevented by avoiding mosquito bites and by taking medicines. Talk to doctor about taking medicines such as chemo prophylaxis before traveling to areas where malaria is common lower the risk of getting malaria by avoiding mosquito bites how we avoid the mosquito bites use mosquito nets when sleeping in places where malaria is present use mosquito repellent after dusk use of coils and vaporizer also wear the protective clothing that avoid the mosquito bite use window screen also malaria can be prevented by controlling the vector how we control the vector by applying the insecticide that control the insect that is this insecticide kill the insect or by applying the larvae site site larvae site kill the larvae which is the uh, second stage of the mosquito in the life cycle. The site means the killing. So insecticide kill the insect mosquito, whereas larvicide kill the larvae. Uh, next is the treatment. Uh, the About treatment, the doctor will choose one or more the based on the type of the malaria whether a malaria parasite is resistant to a medicine, the weight or age of a person infected with the malaria, whether the person is pregnant. So, the, there are different kinds of malaria, there is tartian malaria, benign malaria, various kinds of malaria is there, uh, depending on the species that malaria, uh, malaria species that attack human. So, uh, depending on the type of the malaria, the doctor choose which uh, medicine should be given it also depend on the malaria if the malaria parasite is resistant to a medicine sometimes uh, the uh, medicines is uh, uh, the malaria parasite is resistant to particular medicines in that cas cases the uh, alternate medicine should be given and the dose of the and weight of the persons also depends uh, depending on the dose and and uh, depending on the weight and the weight the dose of the malaria uh, malaria medicine should be given by the doctor and for pregnant women special care should be given for pregnant women certain medicine should not be given so doctor uh, consider this uh, um, this uh, condition that is the type of malaria whether the malaria parasite is resistant to medicine the weight and age of the person infected with the malaria uh, or whether the person is pregnant they choose one or more these things to uh, to give that uh, medicines this the most common medicines are for malaria are artemisinin based combination therapy medicines chloroquine is recommended for treatment of many, um, infection with plasmodium vivax parasite only in places where it is still sensitive to this medicine whereas primacone should be added to the main treatment to prevent relapse of infection with the plasmodium vivax or plasmodium ovule parasites most medicines use in the pill form some people may need to go to health center or hospital for injectable medicines for so for severe cases intravenous medicine should be given to patients last one the vaccines since october 2021 who recommends broad use of the malaria vaccine rts and S slash AS01 among the children 
living in regions with moderate to high plasmodium falciparum malaria transmission. It has been shown that the vaccine significantly reduced the malaria and deadly severe malaria among the young children. So, if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.